In this video, we're going to create a impact particle like this that will be slightly randomized and give a really good inflection for something that happens within the game. Let's actually make a new scene and set this up from scratch. In my new scene, I'm going to create, let's actually just create a little setup here. So we will do a plane and we'll zero that out. Next, I'm going to create my particle effect. To do that, right click, effects, particle system. I'm also going to zero this out. And actually, so that we can see it in three dimensional space, I'm just gonna pull this out for now. Now I'm going to walk through a series of attributes that we can change to affect the behavior of this particle. Now remember what I want to do is I want it to burst outwards from the center and the default has a looping uh, cone shape. So we're gonna have to make a lot of changes. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna turn off looping. Now looping is good if you want a persistent particle effect inside of your environment or you want something like a, uh, like a torch or a fire trail behind your player. But for me, I want a one-time quick burst of particles. I'm gonna turn off looping. Also, I do not want it to play on awake. I want to tell it when to create this burst. So I'm also going to disable play on awake. The last attribute that I generally change when I'm making a new particle is simulation space. It will default to local. This means that if I were to put this as a child underneath another object, so a, um, if I were to make a player, for example, and I were to put my particle system underneath there, and then I rotated my, well, let's actually turn this on. Uh, and I were to rotate my player, see how the particles would rotate with that? I don't want that to be the case. I'm going to ungroup that and delete my player. I want my particles to just exist uh, inside of the world and use their own transformation. So I don't want to, them to inherit transformations from a parent. I just want them to uh, exist inside the world. So to do that, I'm going to change the simulation space to world instead of local. Let's actually save our scene too. Control S inside my scene, so we'll call this particle scene. I mentioned that I want my particle to behave as a burst and a sudden quick uh, burst of particles. To do that, I'm going to expand the emission down here, and I'm going to add a burst. I'm gonna click this little plus button. So what this is going to do is if I press the little play preview right here. So it'll add a, add a burst, but then we also get this steady stream of particles afterwards. That is because we are adding a burst, but we're also up here defining a longer duration. So what I want to do is I want to just keep that burst, but I don't want the trail afterwards. You know, if you, if you did want that, you could keep that as well. Let me turn the duration down to zero. So now we just have the sudden burst effect like that. The next thing I want is I want this to burst outwards in a sphere. Right now it is bursting outwards in a cone. To change that, I'm going to come down to shape. You'll see the shape down here. And you could actually you know, make a wider cone if you wanted to do something like that. But actually I want to change this shape to a sphere instead. So now we have a sphere, so it's looking a little bit better. That is something that will already communicate a burst of collecting or a burst of some sort of impact. You could already use that, but we want to make it a little bit fancier than that. If you want to create an effect of a stretched, almost like a lined uh, effect instead of a square down in renderer, we could change this from renderer mode billboard to stretched billboard. And what that's going to do is it's, just, it's going to stretch it in the outwards motion of its path. So you see how we're getting this uh, elongated sphere in this case? It will stretch your sprite, so just keep that in mind. It's, it's a really cool effect, but you may want it, you may not. I think it's going to work really well for the effect we're trying to create. So I'm just gonna keep that on right there. Now the next thing I wanna do is I don't really like this fuzzy particle. Now I could create my own sprite and I could put this on the sprite and my own sprite could have uh, different effects. You know, you could do stars or some harder edge. As a really simple example, I'm just gonna change this default particle system from this to a sprites default, which you'll see is just going to 
had a uh, solid color inside of the entire particle sprite uh, image down here. So I'm just gonna do that. Again, you could create your own custom sprites if you want, but for me, just for demo purposes, I'm gonna keep this at sprites default. And so now we're getting something like this. So this is already looking a little bit better, but the next thing I notice is that my size on my particles is a little bit too big. So to change that, I'm going to scroll back up into start size at the very top. I'm gonna to change that from one to something like 0.2. And a lot of what I'm doing here, I've figured out some values beforehand, but a lot of it is tweaking. So, you know, for example, if we had 0.6, we will play that and say, you know what, maybe that's a little bit too big, or maybe for your purposes, it's what you want. But let's turn that down to something like 0.2. That's looking closer to what I want it. I could even imagine this going even lower if you want. Now, another thing you could do, let's say that I don't like that all of these particles are the exact same size. What I could do is I could add a randomized element so that each particle, when it is spawned, is spawned at a slightly different value. So to do that under start size, <laughs> This little arrow at the very right, if you click this and you go to random between two constants, this will allow you to define two different values that it will use to determine the size of this particle. Or you, you might also see that a lot of other attributes give this option. So if you want a randomized value between two points, just know that you can click this and define that. So I'm probably gonna do this on a few other attributes as we work through this. So start size, let's put this, um, maybe I want 0.2 to be around the average, but let's give it the ability to go smaller. So 0.1 and the ability to go larger. So I'll do 0.3. Let's look at that. Okay, it's a little bit better. I actually kind of like that. And you'll notice there is some difference in the size here between all of my particles. I don't like this really slow moving speed. I want a really quick burst. To affect that, I want to come up to start speed. It starts off at five. Let's bump this up to something like 20 or 30. Okay, that's that's got a lot more impact to it. Start lifetime, you'll see that these particles exist for a very, very long time if I zoom out. That's way too long. I don't want them to exist that long. So I'm going to come up to start lifetime and I'm going to change that to something much, much smaller. It's say 0.5 maybe. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I think I'm gonna turn that down even lower. Again, this is the mess with it until it looks right method. Okay, so just a really quick burst and then the particles go out. Okay, so we have our lifetime much shorter. And you know, after I made the lifetime shorter, I think it'd be really cool if instead of all the particles shooting out at max speed, if I could have varied speeds so that some particles will go slow and end up towards the center, and some will go really fast and end up at the edge. You'll see that the effect that's created is that everything just moves outwards really quickly. I want some particles to still be floating around the center. So I'm going to change the start speed from a flat 20 to a random between two constants, between something like, let's do five and 30 maybe. Okay, so you'll see how some particles are, are ending around this point and some are ending way out here. I actually like that effect. Even though some particles are moving slower and some are really fast, they're all disappearing at the same speed. Maybe I want their lifetime to be slightly varied as well. So I'm going to come back up here to start lifetime. We'll change this random between two constants and I'm just gonna do 0.2 and 0.4. And it is a little bit subtle, but you'll see how they start disappearing at different rates. I think that looks a little bit more interesting. Now we still only have a generic white color, so let's change the color now, do something more interesting. And I'm going to do a randomized color. You know, you could do a flat color like this. If I make a, let's do an orange. But I think it'd be more interesting if we have a, a little bit of color variation here. So I'm going to do, again, start color, random between two colors. This little drop down on the right. Change that something lighter orange, something like that. 
And you'll see how we get this subtle variation. And I like the look of that a little bit better. It's just more interesting, a little bit more complex. So let's keep that. And the more I press this button, the more I'm seeing, I think I want more particles. I think 30 uh, down here is not enough. So to change that, if you go down to emission and bursts, this is my count. This is my number of particles in my burst. I bump that up to something like 50. There's more particles. It just feels a lot better. And when I bump those particles up, I can more clearly see uh, the differentiation between my random values. You'll see that I have more in the center and more in the out. You know, I could even bump that up even more if I wanted to 70. Looks even crazier. They have to end up somewhere between, so something like 60. Okay, great. I like that. The last thing that I'm noticing in my outwards burst is that all of my particles are disappearing instantaneously. I think it would look a little bit more interesting and realistic if my particles had a subtle fade right at the end before they just pop out of existence. So to affect that, I'm going to scroll down to color over lifetime and I'm going to expand that. Make sure you click the little checkbox in order to tell it to use the setting. And right here in color over lifetime, if you click that, mainly right now I care about the opacity and um, this, is, this is actually uh, blending this color. If you click this little top arrow right here, this is saying the opacity at the start of the particle lifetime will be full opacity. And if I click the little arrow over here, it will also be full opacity. Now, if I do something like this, if I click on the last arrow and I change this to zero, you'll see the effect this has is this is slowly fading out my particle from 100% opacity to 0% opacity over time. So if I do that and I hit play, you see, I don't really like that either. It's fading out too quickly. I want it to maintain max opacity until towards the very end and then fade out very quickly. So to do that, I'm going to open back up my color over lifetime and I'm going to click right here to add another little arrow at the top. And that is my opacity. You could think of this as a keyframe. So at this point in time, it said max opacity. At this point in time, which would be somewhere around say 75%, or you could just click and drag to reposition this. You know, if you accidentally click and make an extra, you can always just select it and delete it. So I'm gonna make this somewhere around 70. You could also put the, the value in there if you wanna be exact. And at 70, I want it to be full opacity. So I'm gonna change that back to 255. So this is going to be full opacity until right around 70% of its lifetime. And it's going to fade out very quickly. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's kind of subtle, but you'll see how it's not an instantaneous pop out at the end. It's a fade out towards the very end of its lifetime. So say I like the look of that. And we're, we're actually done with the meat of our generic impact particle. You know, this looks pretty decent for most effects and we could create multiples of this and change the colors for different sorts of effects or the speed and, and the shape. I want to revisit one last attribute to tell you if you wanted to keep experimenting with this stuff, the stretched billboard will lock out a few other things like rotation. So if you prefer the effect of billboard, so I'm gonna change that back to billboard, you see the effect is these, these particles outwards rather than that lined effect. You could actually do this and then do something with, for example, trails. So if I enable trails, um, and you'll see that it's missing a uh, trail renderer down here. If you click play, you'll see how it's, it's purple. If you scroll down to the bottom in renderer, if you do trail material and you change that to default line, so you can make these trails and it's kind of crazy. Uh, you can tone this down with, I believe it's inside of trails, the lifetime, put that down to like 0.2. You know, we're creating a very similar effect. One maybe, without the stretch billboard. So just two different options for you right there. Um, you know what, I kind of like this better now that I'm looking at it. You know, let's, let's do a variation. Let's do two random constants between 0.05 and maybe 1.5, or sorry, 0.15, that would be better. 
you see how there's varying trail lengths. Let's say that we like that a little bit more. Again, just other options for you. There's so many other things you can do. You can change the velocity of your lifetime. Um, the rotation, you could add a, a gravity to it if you want. There are so many things to mess around with. But this is the basics of it. So I'm gonna clap some of this. Okay, so we can play that, we can see the effect. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you how to trigger this effect at runtime. Because I do want to tell this to play a burst when a game event happens. So to do that, we're going to mock up a player. So I'm just gonna do 3D object uh, cube. You know, in a real world scenario, you wanna make this, the maybe the art and the collider a, uh, you know, a sub object. For now, I'm going to call this player. Okay, and I'll uh, reposition this at zero, zero, zero. I will pull this upwards a little bit to say 0.5. Now, one way to trigger a particle effect is if in a script, I can get a reference to a particle system, I can play it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel my particle system. We will pretend that this is a generic collect particle. And I'm also going to zero this out as well. So now we have our collect particle down here. Let's say that I want my collect particle to appear outwards from the player. Kind of like that. And just because I want this to look a little bit better, I'm going to create a material for the player. Make that blue, oh, bluish. Okay, and I'm going to apply that. Great, so we have our player. We have our collect particle. It'll look like that. Now what I wanna do is to maintain the reference of this particle effect, I actually want this to be part of the player. So I'm going to drag and drop this underneath the player object. So now the collect particle will be a child object. Meaning that if I move the player around, see I'll pull the player up right there. If I play the particle, it's still coming outwards from the player. So the last thing I need to do is actually create a script on the player to reference the particle and tell it to play. So to do this, I'm going to create a script. So down in assets, I click create C sharp script. I'm just gonna call this player. You know, this could be any other script. The code would be the same. Uh, for now, we're, we want to imagine this existing on the player and the player is going to have a graphic for collecting. So I'm gonna get rid of all this. At the very top, I'm going to expose a reference to a particle system and we'll call this the collect particle. I'm also going to assign this to null just because that's what it will be anyways. I just wanna be really clear. And this will clear out most editor warnings that you'll see pop up because something doesn't have an initial value. Uh, this will minimize that. Now for testing, we are going to simulate, let's do input.getKeyDown. Let's just test it from the spacebar press. And when we press spacebar, we are going to collect a thing. Now, what does that mean? Well, we'll create a function for collect. You know, maybe I, I imagine this would even be something public that uh, another script could call. Now, when we collect something, we want to play the collect graphics. Later on, we may want to play the collect sound effects too. But our collect graphics is going to be our particle. So at this point, if I created a container to store a reference to a collect particle down there, we'll store it inside of the player and we'll fill that in in the inspector by using serialized field. And to play it, it's as simple as collect particle dot play. So what we're doing here is we're just using this for testing. So I'll leave a little, little note for myself to do. Uh, delete after finished testing. So now inside of update, we're detecting what if we press the space bar and if we did play our collect particle that we referenced in our scene. Now the last thing we need to do, if you save your script, 
we're telling it to play, but if you look on your player right here, we still have not told it which particle we want to play. Now the particle we want it to play is this child object that we created. So if we drag and drop there, the player script is now referencing the collect particle that is a child. So when we press space bar, this collect particle will play its associated particle effect. Great. We save that, come back here. We make sure that we referenced it. We hit play. Now, if we click down in our scene and we press space bar, we are simulating the action of collecting a thing and playing the associated particle effects. So as long as you have a particle effect that you can reference, and generally I like to do this as a child object, on your character or your enemy or your kill volume or whatever it is, you can play a burst particle effect to create that really interesting feeling that we get when, when we want to communicate something happened, right? Took damage, collected a thing, fired off the rocket launcher or whatever else you want it to be. So I hope this helped you out. This is, you can reuse this particle effect uh, setup and you, know, you could duplicate that. You can make this a prefab if you want, but I think it's just really helpful to have a very quick and dirty go-to particle effect to communicate a interesting game event.